Welcome back to video three, what to yeah. Today we're going to be sorting out this by fitting these. Um, is it perfect? No. Will it work? Yes. And this. And on the Facebook MGTF page. We're only a week away from Christmas, so if you want to give me an early Christmas present, please like and subscribe and make sure you share. Enjoy. My name's Craig and I'm exhausted. Let's go. see it there's the nut that connects to the clutch master cylinder so we need to undo that to get the pipe off wasn't too bad so we've got that undone let's get that off yeah that nut is um seized onto the pipe so i'm gonna cut the pipe off i think yeah you can't see anything all right we're through the line that should come out now the turn yeah straight out Right, that's that. Master cylinder. Unclick these. Okay, that's, yeah, that's that one done. So there's a hard line that runs under the car, and then comes up at the back um, into the engine bay, and then it goes onto a, it goes onto a flexi. So it's the front of the car that way, and the clutch line runs down underneath this um, centre panel to the back, and then goes up there into the engine bay. And you can see there's a, a significant point of corrosion there on that and it's pretty much the same with a brake line as well so i need to do i'm doing the brake line later then you've got these nifty clips that unclip nicely pull it out pull it out pull it out it's got this center panel that runs across the car i think there might be one under there and i'm going to take that off later to do the brakes because i'm putting a um braided line on for the clutch what I can probably do is just thread that through or tie it to one end and pull it through I'm gonna cut the line here so I can pull it out easier yeah just snap that off so I'll straighten it up and then pull it out there's one more clip I need to get off right so that clip's come away quite easily I'll just pull this down all right so this is the sorry state of the clutch line you can see some corrosion there this way I corroded through, I just snapped that off really easy. Just pulled it out, runs a hard line under the car, then it swings up through this flexi up into the engine bay and connects to the slave cylinder. So you can replace, could have replaced just the hard line, could have replaced the flexi as good as it was, but it's easier now to just run a, a single braided hose all the way, no joints, no connections, so it's, it's more reliable. So let's get that fitted, I'm gonna th thread that through, shouldn't take too long. The ends are identical. Doesn't matter which one has to thread through. There's the original clip for the for the original line, so we'll go down past that, then down behind the subframe and under the car. Right, I just posted that through. I just need to make sure I go the right way and not round this cross brace. So let's get here. Let's move that back out. Okay, that's fine. Gently pull it through because this is getting stuck, so we'll go back the top. I'm just gonna pop this in so we don't lose the lose the end of it. And uh, remember there's there's two of these copper washers, one each side of the, um, of the, of the, of the part you have to go through. So if you look carefully at that, it's difficult. You see that at the bottom there, it's not quite circular. As I bent it round, it's levelled out. Half of it is not through, I have to file a bit away. Right, so I just got that a nip with the vise, so it's slightly oval due to the bending of the end. Um, so let's just give it a quick squeeze in there and then just, just screw the nut in. So you've got to fit that on there. Now I want to try and thread this through here and hopefully get it out the other end. Bit of jiggling and we're through. Let's just thread this through. Oh, I've got a broken clip there, I need to attach that to the cable tie for now. And then we go up and we thread up into the engine bay between the, the uh, firewall and the, and the subframe. The subframe is going to have to be cleaned up. Well that's threaded through now. We seem to get a lot of line, but the, the way this works on the slave cylinder, I don't think there's a way to actually attach that using this angle in that orientation anyway, so we have to loop it back round. There's enough, just enough to do that, so that's okay. Right, so I've got that in, it's looped back round, so there's enough material to do that. I think if I had it on the other way around anyway, it wouldn't get past the slave cylinder, so let's tighten that up. So I bought this brake leading tool, um, attached it to a, a compressor, so you use the, uh, the pressure from the compressor and 
So what it does is it creates a vacuum. So you put this on the nipple, press the trigger, the air passes through here and pulls the fluid through from the, the reservoir um, at the top. So instead of pushing it through, we're pulling it through. Never used it before, we'll see how we get on. So we've got the connection applied to the bleed nipple. That goes into the canister and then that's connected to the compressor. So pulling the trigger on here, lets out the volume and creates the vacuum and should pull the fluid down here. So we'll give it a go and see what happens. Right, this is the clutch line I've just taken off. It was fitted, but I couldn't get it to stop leaking. And if you look at that, let's zoom in, that isn't quite circular. So it's as though they bent that after the hole's been made, and this banjo just won't seal. And it's the same on both ends. So yeah, so that one's coming off, going back. And this is the one I've got from someone on the Facebook MGTF page. So you can, I mean, just comparing the two, you can tell there's just a difference in, in quality. The diameter of the, the lines should make pressing the pedal down easier. And then that, that banjo fitting at the end, just brilliant. There's the connection remade at the slave cylinder. I'm going around the front. There's the connection at the master cylinder. So they're all tightened up. So I'm going to do the bleed nipple now. Now if I'd have screwed this together properly, I could have used that to hold the trigger down, create a vacuum while I push the pedal slowly. But, that's, yeah, I'm not doing that. So I'll just put some mole grips on, create a vacuum, and we'll just watch it go down at the front and maybe push the pedal a few times. Right, so that's on. The press is going to kick in in a second. Going down. Let's pop that up. Really hard to tell if any fluid's coming out of this. It's got to be going somewhere. You can't see it. Not, not clearly. Let's pull this one through. Slowly. Then we'll clizzle it down and try the pedal. Alright, let's give it a press, see if that's worked. <laughs> oh, down on it. No, nothing. Yeah. Fast forward a couple of days later, I've still not got any clutch. So this vacuum system sucks. Sucks out the fluid from inside the hydraulic lines and gives you that hydraulic system with no air bubbles in it. And it sucked for the clutch, but it sucks. It will not get me the clutch. Um, I don't know what it's doing, if it's pulling a vacuum and pulling the air bubbles in or, or something. I don't know if the, the pipe's too, got too big a diameter for it to work effectively. I don't know. And I bought this one over the one that blows, pushes through the system. Um, because in the past I've used those and I've kind of run out of pressure on my tyres. So that was a bit of a reason why I bought this one. Um, because I've got a compressor. Now I can pull up the tyres anyway, so it's not a major issue. So now I've bought the one that blows. So it's not a Gunston Easy Bleed. This is the Simply Automatic Brake and Clutch Bleeding Kit. Um, and it's about half the price. So pretty much the same thing. So we're going to fill this with fluid, attach it to the clutch master cylinder, and uh, follow what I think are pretty rudimentary instructions and see if we can get it to work. And if this doesn't work, we might have more of a clutch problem um, than just hydraulics. We might have to start investigating changing the master cylinder or changing the slave cylinder. So I'll say it with some luck, this one works. Well, I lost sound along the way, so I'm just going to do a quick recap on some of the things I've done already, not successful and not so successful. We filled the charging bottle up. Um, I'm not going to put some more in that now. We attach that to the reservoir on here. I use the spare wheel to pressurise the system. But the connection on the end is awful, so it just deflated that, so that's gone flat. Um, I can't get that end to stay on, so what I did is I used the front tyre here. When I push it on, I can get pressure into the bottle and then push the fluid through. 
So I undid the, the hose attachment here, pressurized the system until the air, air bubbles came out and then fluid started coming out and then locked that off. So this reservoir through the master cylinder, clutch pedal is um, fully depressed, so that's up, um, has now bled out this portion of the, is this called the damper? I don't know what it's called. Bled out this portion of the, of the clutch master cylinder, so we should be okay now. I'm going to push it down the pipe into the back to try and do the clutch clean nipple, bleed nipple. So this pack doesn't come with a, um, a jar or anything to attach the bleed nipple. So I've got, I already had one of these um, bleeding kits, I'm not sure it says one man. So this is attached now to the nipple and I've undone the nipple half turn, so that should be enough. Someone did say I have to bleed the attachment hose as well before I do the bleed nipple, but I'm not sure about that. I'm going to try it without because I've tightened that up and it was weeping a little bit so I don't really want to undo it again at this point so we'll try it without undoing that nut and bleeding the attachment hose and just try and come straight through the nipple so we know where the fluid level is so now I'm going to press this on to the tyre to push the fluid through now the nipple's undone on the back the level should go down once we've probably gone halfway to half to the minimum I'll lock it out I'll let the pressure off hopefully the uh, non return valve at the the back end will stop it coming back and we'll tweak it on and see what happens. Let's keep going with that to the, towards the minimum to try and get any air bubbles in the system out. I'll stop there. Okay. Right, so we saw a reasonable amount came through. I locked off the nipple here and I just tried the, the clutch pedal and then nothing, still nothing. So we're going to undo that again. So the banjo um, sealant uses copper washers and sits against this face here. Now bear in mind the original fitting isn't a banjo, it just screws in um, into a hard line. So we don't normally sit on this face as a sealing um, location. So is it something to do with that face not being square enough? And then when I look at this I've just taken off, so it's not quite flat, it's got a little got a little kink in it. Is that the reason for it leaking? I don't know. There you can. There you can. Maybe you just see it there. A little kink in it. Now, the banjo itself looks fine. So, it can only be the ceiling face. So, I'm going to have a gonna drop the camera down there and see if I can get a better look. Right, so I'm having to go with the emery cloth to get in there and give it a good clean up. So, I can't, obviously can't video it, but I'll show you some pictures about progress. So, um, a bit, bit more to do on that. Get it cleaned up and then we can try free fitting. Right, so here's the problem. So I've taken the slave cylinder out. You can see the corrosion at the bottom of that mating face there. Obviously, as I've already said, the original fitting doesn't use that face, so it being corroded or it being square has no bearing on the ability of this thing to seal OEM wise. The banjo with the the washer needs that face flat and clean. And when you rotate it around to look how flat it is. It's not flat in the slightest. Now I've obviously done some of that in my use of some emery cloth, paper, um, sandpaper down there. Is it flat in the first place? No idea, but it's definitely not going to seal. But like that is it. So it's sitting on that high lip and then the, the fluid is just pouring out the back. So some progress, still got the low spot though. Remember when you're you filing you've got to go forward and across at the same time if you want if you keep going backwards and forwards like that, you're just going to round it off so you've got to go forward and across at the same time you can't do it with one hand so you just pop you down a second to get this done right it's hard to see but i'm not sure how square that is but by hand it might be good enough Pop it back in and give it a try. That doesn't work. I think we might be onto a new cylinder, but look at the state of it. it might be such a bad thing. Put that back on, retighten now. So let's put some tissue under it, pressurise it, and check it's not leaking. Right, tissue's under it. Bottle's full. Let's bank some pressure. Let's bank some pressure on. This shouldn't go down very much. Shooting down before. 
so pressure's gone on. There's a little bit of a leak on top of the um, reservoir, but that's not really going down any great deal, and the pressure is on, unless I've got a flat tire, seems fine. Let's pull that tissue out. It's dry. Oh, I think we've done it. Well, that's in place. Let's put some pressure on. Let's put some pressure on and this should go down now. Oh, yeah, shooting down. That's good. That means it's going through the bleed nipple. Let's go down quite a way on this. Because we know we've had some trouble at that bottom end, and there's probably some air gone in. So, I'm going to drop below these words, I think. Right. Well, that might do for me. Let's try that. Right, I tightened it. There's definitely a lot of fluid in there, so it's all come through the bleed nipple this time. Doesn't look like it's leaking. Let's go press the pedal. Right, cross all the fingers you've got, let's go do this. Ready? Oh, nothing! Oh my god! How is that still nothing? Right, so there's loads of fluid came through that bleed nipple. Um, so hydraulically, I'm starting to think this is okay. But reading the forums, there are some things about seized um clutch arms so starting to think it might be more than just hydraulics on this occasion because the pedal just feels like nothing and if it, if i've got a reasonable hydraulic system i should might feel something even if it's not brilliant i'm gonna just put it in gear and start it and see if it moves see if the clutch is engaged or not and then we'll go from there Right, fade back in a little while later, battery died and I got really frustrated. So I did a fair few things off off camera and I made some progress. Uh, on that day, I got half a clutch. How did I get that? Well, if you recall earlier, I was having a problem with this valve staying on the tire. So what I did is I pressurized the system, pushed the fluid into the bottle and back into the reservoir down the line and then locked off the valve to keep the pressure in the bottle pressure in the, in the system and then tighten the bleed nipple and in doing that I got half a clutch but the clutch half I got wasn't great and as that, the more I pressed it the firmer it got and I'm thinking oh that's brilliant I'm getting more clutch what happened then is the release arm going into the, the clutch housing seized so I applied a liberal amount of lubrication, let that soak in, wiggled it, and then that, and then that released. So with my half clutch, I could pump it and get something out of it, but it just wasn't good enough. So what I did was, um, with the help from my little boy, attached the valve to the tyre. He held it in place, so we pushed the fluid through the system at the same time, let that flow, and then I locked off the bleed nipple. And now got a full clutch so we're moving not quite moving got a flat battery again so I think I need a new battery so that's good clutch done I mean this video is all over the place I'm jumping backwards and forwards between clutch and brakes in reality but I'm just doing clutch first then brakes so um, I lost a fair bit of video footage for the brake stuff I'm not sure what happened but I've, I've lost loads in terms of the brakes this is all about the rear brakes the hard line going from the front of the car to the back of the car um, to the three-way union in the engine bay on the firewall and then going up to each of the uh, rear wheels. I also did the flexes as well all around. So what I'll show you now is taking off that union and separating the parts, all the parts were corroded and then I'll make one of the um, make one of the hard lines to the back and make the other two pretty much the same process. I did get slightly better at it but and then they all got fitted before I moved to bleeding them. It's hard to see. These aren't coming out, so I've hacksawed two of them off 
I'm going to try and undo the bolt that's attaching the uh, T to the to the firewall. See if that comes out, and then I can lift the third out. Hopefully. Right, this is never coming apart, so let's use some heat on this one. Let's get her nice and hot. Yeah, there we go. Magic. Right, then the second one. Yeah, the heat's doing its job on that one as well. Yeah, she's undone. Good. Pipe sees to the nuts as wind her out. Right, so for this job, we're going to be using this cheap pipe flaring kit from Amazon to drape her. So. Reasonable quality, maybe, but I don't think it's that different to things that you can find cheap online, um, non branded, and maybe things like hard freight in the US. So that's not part of the kit, that's mine. So we've, uh, we've got the, the holder, so you put your, your pipe in the, in the hole, a small amount proud, and then you've got your, your little dies here, um, and you can measure how much you need to stick it out by using that. Pop this in the end of the pipe. And pop this on, screw the whole thing together and uh, and flare the end. So we'll, we'll give that a go and see where we end up. Right, so we'll try and do the smallest piece first. Start easy. Part of me said you should do the longest piece first. If you if you knacker up the longest piece, then you can make a smaller piece from the longer piece. But go on, we'll start with this one. Give us a bit of a length as we go and see how we get our steel hoses. That's why they've corroded. And we've got some um, cupra nickel hoses and fittings. Decided not to get this from Amazon. I didn't. I don't, I don't mind buying things from Amazon, but when it comes to brake lines, I felt like I'm all, I more wanted to get it from a, a garage. So I got it from a, a car auto part supplier online, someone that reputable that I knew. So I've already swaged an end on here. So what I might do if I can is just run. I did that to practice. What I might do is just run this along it and see if I can get it to come all the way around. What do you reckon the chances are of that? Oh yeah. Bear with me. I'll have some fun doing this. Look this. Hold the line call that. Yeah, it's dark and cold now in the UK. After four, after half past four, there's pretty much not much you can do outside. So unless you've got a workshop, then you can kind of scuff it. So I'm in the kitchen tonight, bending some pipes. Try and get one done tonight and a couple done over the, maybe tomorrow night. And I'm ready to fit them on Friday. So yay, we've got our first piece done. Brilliant, looks good. Right, so now I need to start bending this. I've not got a bending tool. So I'm going to be using odds and sods and circular things just to bend this around. So we'll see how we get on. So I've got a variety of rolling pins out of the kitchen drawer and we'll just use one of these, that seems to fit okay. Let's see how we get on bending this bad boy. This is quite malleable stuff so it shouldn't be too difficult. You don't want to do is try to bend it without something to bend it around because if you kink it then you're knackered. Right so this is the first bit so um just bring that in for me. I've never done this before so that's actually turned out really well so let's make the rest. Driving down a country road, windows roll down, radio playing, winding past the open fields, the fresh air is so invigorating, going wherever it may lead, no rush, no plan, enjoy the ride, just me and the countryside. On this country road, my spirit feels so alive. Passing by a withered barn, horses grazing near a farmhouse. Rows of corn and wheat sway in the breeze. A farmer's tractor works the farmland. Going wherever it may lead, no 
much, no plan, enjoy the ride, just me and the countryside. Right, so there's two sides to this tool. So one's flat and one's got a recess in it. So you need a bit of the the, uh, the recess in it to make sure you get the shape you want. It's gonna go on like that. Then we've got the die bit. So you've got the die bit in the neighboring hole there. You can then look at how much it protrudes and that's the kind of how much pipe you want sticking out as well tighten all this down I'll quickly show you that there you see I've got the protrusion of the pipe and the and then the protrusion of the die and that's how much you want that's gonna go in there and then you swage it okay you flare it let's do that that slides over. Try to make sure the thing is square and then just tighten it up. There in the end till it stops, till it comes to a bottom out. Yeah, there we are. And we've got an end. First one done. Nice flared ends. Uh, that's good, that's good. And um, is it perfect? No. Will it work? Yes. So, first one I've done. So, um, for my first attempt, I'm quite happy with that. Got some longer ones to do tomorrow and then get, get them fitted back on the car. So, good stuff. In terms of the kit, I think it's about £15, maybe £17 off, off Amazon. So, it's not complicated works quite well it's not perfect if you're going to be doing this a lot you probably want a bit something a bit more fit for the job but it, it does work just so yeah so give it a go hi guys now we've fitted the new brake lines quickly going to read the blades quickly going to read the can't say the bloody words quickly going to bleed the brakes it's better you also have this um replenishment reservoir that fits in here and as the fluid gets pulled through it's supposed to replenish it and make sure you don't run dry okay it comes with these little white caps these fit inside your reservoir and what you do is you change the height of this by screwing it in until the the brass bit sits just into the fluid what it's supposed to do whoa really windy what it's supposed to do is then when the fluid when it Fluid, fluid loses contact with the brass bit, this flows through, and the fluid comes back up, it stops. So we'll see if it works. So, I've got my replenishment bottle in here. This is topped up. This is now topped up to near the line, and then this valve's open. So this should get, come down as the fluid gets pulled out. I'm gonna crack this off a quarter of a turn. Leave the ring spanner on so you can tighten it up. I'm gonna pop the hose on the nipple. She's on, make sure you're still caught on the turn. And if I press this, it should suck the fluid through. This is so long, I should be able to watch leaving and then arriving. Absolutely nothing happening. So what did we conclude? Whether to suck or whether to blow? You know what? I'm not sure. So I've got this to work for the brakes. Um, in the end I've got this to work for the clutch. They're working okay and all your parts are okay and they both work but they both work in different ways. This one it's difficult to see what's going on with this pipe. You can't see much through it and you can't see what's going on at the master cylinder as you're sucking it through unless you lock it off. But this one does give you access to suck it at the nipple and tighten the nipple at the same time. I think I've got this one to work with the clutch right and I didn't have a leak in the clutch. I saw in the video earlier which was a major leak this was never going to work then I think this might have got me in the end point sooner. Well, this one works as well. So you can clearly see it's pushing it through as you watch the fluid go down in the bottle. You need to be working right. What I should have done with this, as soon as I figured out that this, that this end wasn't attaching to the tire properly, I should have taken it back and got another one. Made my life a heck of a lot easier. I think they both work. This one does take a bit of rigmarole. You've got to get your compressor out and you need to have a compressor to do it. And this one, you have to watch out you don't tighten your tires. If I was going to go for one again, 
I'll probably go for this one. I think it's just simple to use. And I can do this. And I can also do this. More importantly, I can do this. So that'll do me for this video. We're making progress, which is great. So we've got timing belt done. We've got brakes. We've got a clutch that now works. We've got a gearbox that works. Um, so we're moving towards getting this thing back on the road. So what's next? Next thing we need to do is get some new tires on this because the ones that are on it are absolutely shocking. The rubber's so hard and cracked. So that's the next job. But today, done. Brakes are done. Clutch is done. Moved in the right direction. My name's Craig. And I'm exhausted. See you guys soon. See you next time. And if I don't see you guys before, have yourself a Merry Christmas. It's 15th of December today, so it'll soon be here. Have some fun, spend some time with the family, drink and be merry. Take care. See you soon. Bye.